What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and today let's take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S9 in its full leaked glory, all of the specs and everything we know about it in comparison with the iPhone X. Now I know I'm Everything Apple Pro, but once in a while it's not a bad idea to take a look at what the competition is doing, because it directly relates to what Apple will be doing in the future. I mean, it's just hard to deny the fact that sometimes Apple copies, sometimes it happens vice versa, and it's a good thing. Competition in this tech field is a good thing. It means we're going to get a better product on both sides eventually. So let's take a look at Samsung's latest offering, the Galaxy S9, which is actually going to be out very, very soon. And it's kind of exciting. There's some great things inside of it. So I wanted to mention that. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. And this video that you're watching right now is from Concept Creator, great concept artist. I've worked with him before and you guys can find a link down below to where you can subscribe to his channel and see this original video. Great stuff. Definitely would recommend it. Anyways, what do we know about the Galaxy S9? Let's get into it. Basically everything at this point. But first off, I wanted to mention what they're going to be called. In a recent FCC filing, the actual names or the model names have been revealed for the Galaxy S9 and the Galaxy S9 Plus. So for the Galaxy S9, that's the G960F and for the Plus, the G965F. So those are basically the model numbers. Now, what are they going to look like? The Galaxy S8 for me was an incredible design, revolutionary, honestly. It's the first mainstream small bezel display. It's just beautiful. It was very slim. The camera is near flush on the back. It's everything that I would want in a smartphone from an Android phone. So what can they possibly do this time around to differentiate it? And what you're looking at here is the original design that was leaked by Ice Universe on Twitter way back in the day. And this is what they wanted to do. They wanted to go ahead and get the whole bottom of the screen filled in with display. No more bezel there. No more chin like on the Galaxy S8 in order to match up with the iPhone. 10. Now this was scrapped in favor of a less futuristic design, it's just a updated design of the Galaxy S8, which isn't a bad thing, that was a fantastic design. This time around, the design is just basically refined, it chipped away at some of the bezels on the top and bottom. As you can see, it's about 10% less bezel there, the top is a little bit more optimized, but basically the design remains the same. And this is confirmed also by Gordon Kelly, also from OnLeaks, they have all leaked the same design. This is the real one that is happening. And it's hard to deny at this point because we're just a couple months away from release. Uh, we've got a bunch of case leaks, screen protector leaks, component leaks, and everything really adds up to this design. And the iPhone 10 had the same pattern a couple months before. Everybody already knew what the design was. So, hate it or love it, this is it. And it does evolve on the Galaxy S8 in several ways. So on the front, a little bit less bezel on the top and bottom. On the rear is where most of the change does happen. So the cameras are centrally aligned now. You do have a fingerprint sensor which is below the camera lens. It fixes one of the biggest issues with the Galaxy S8 series is that it was off to the side. You'd smudge your camera all the time. They sort of address this by putting it underneath the camera sensor and swapping the flash unit onto the other side. So this should make that fingerprint situation a little bit easier. Also, you'll notice that on the Galaxy S9 Plus, there is now a dual lens setup. Much like the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, we're going to have a base model and then a dual lens upgraded model, uh, probably with dual optical image stabilization and all the great stuff that the Galaxy Note 8 has right now. And I wanted to mention the naming really quick before I get too into the technical stuff. The Galaxy S9, I don't know if that really makes sense. If they labeled it something like the S10, it would be more in direct competition with the iPhone 10. So I feel like that might be something that they would do, but it's rumored that it will be the S9 and S9 Plus. I was just thinking back in the Note days, they skipped the Note 6 in favor of the Note 7 to match up with the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. So that way, people don't think it's an inferior older phone just based on the number in the title alone. So the resolution of the display is unlikely to change. Many sources are saying it will be staying the same. So a QHD display that's scaled down to work in 1080p in the native mode. Also, the front, a lot of screen protector leaks have happened, as you can see. It does look a little bit sleeker. I mean, there's just a little bit less bezel, but it does give it an overall newer appearance. Although from the front, from a distance, you will not be able to tell. It's just such a minimal amount of bezel that was removed. Although I will take as little bezel as possible. It would have still been great if they followed the iPhone 10 and just cut away on the bottom all the bezel there. Now, it was rumored in the early days that the Galaxy S9 would be Samsung's first phone with an embedded fingerprint sensor beneath the display. 
Unfortunately, it seems that the technology just hasn't caught up. Yes, it exists. The production scalability of it is unknown right now. Although, the first phone that will be releasing with an embedded fingerprint sensor will be a phone from Vivo who just demonstrated this technology. It's two times as fast as Face ID. Very slim, can work through any type of glass, basically. And it is the future of biometrics, they say. So we'll see if that eventually comes to a Galaxy phone, but will not be happening on the Galaxy S9. The Bixby button will remain on the side, although people don't know why it's there other than remapping it for other custom functions. The Bixby button to some just seems a little pointless, but Samsung thought that it should remain. And the craziest thing is that the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which was rumored to be eliminated in the early days of Galaxy S9 rumors, will remain. A leaked circuit board actually shows a clear cutout for where that can be placed, which is incredible. Nowadays, most phones are removing it, and for Galaxy to stick to their guns and keep including it in their phones, I think will retain a lot of loyal customers. I personally have never used the headphone jack, not even my adapter on the iPhone 10, at least in a year on my 7, 8, just, it's unnecessary for me. I have a Bluetooth life now, but there are many people that haven't upgraded. They have cars, that have auxiliary jacks, they don't want to switch to a cheap Bluetooth FM transmitter, and it's just, it's great that they're keeping it, especially if there's no reason to remove it, you know? So that's gonna remain, and there have been other uh, supporting leaks from other areas that it will stay. Now, this circuit board is just the nail in the coffin that it will be there. And the micro SD card will remain, one of the greater features any Android phone should have. And interestingly enough, when it comes to storage, there's a rumor that the 512 gigabyte chip that Samsung has just introduced, a VRAM, the first one ready for a smartphone, will make its way to the Galaxy S9 as a first subject. I think that would be cool, unnecessary, but cool as an option if you wanted it. Also on the bottom, the single port speaker will remain, which on the Galaxies, honestly, they just aren't that great. In comparison to the iPhone 10, it has a dual stereo speaker setup, one coming from the earpiece, one from the bottom, and it, it's just booming, it's loud, it's clear. I'm impressed every time I use it how loud it is. So I wish that the Galaxy did something like that, but just a mono speaker on the bottom will remain. And incredibly enough, the battery size on the Galaxy S9 will be increasing from 3000 milliamps to 3200 milliamps. That's crazy that they can fit that in in such a small package. I mean, the internals must be getting more compact in order to accommodate a larger battery in the same size. So that's great, all in the name of progress once again. I mean, on the iPhone 10, Apple did the dual stacked logic board design and that saved a lot of space with the L-shaped battery. Maybe Samsung is incorporating some sort of technology like that in their Galaxy S9. So again, competition is good. It's good when Apple does things that Samsung doesn't and vice versa because then they work against each other to progress. It just means as a consumer, you win in the end. The Galaxy S9 Plus battery though is unknown. The size, that's just for the S9, but I'm assuming that one would be growing as well. In comparison to the iPhone 10's battery, 2,716 milliamps, that's quite a departure even between the base model S9. And in early spec leaks, the Galaxy S9 will supposedly have a choice between 4 and 6 gigabytes depending on what region of the world you live in as those tend to differentiate. The Galaxy S9 Plus will have a flat 6 gigabytes of RAM which will help with one of the biggest drawbacks of the S8 right now is that it just reloads apps all the time. You can use a few apps, go back to one you used just a couple minutes ago, and you'll have to reload it, reset the progress where you were. So what's powering this beast? The Samsung Galaxy S9 will likely be the home, the first home of the Snapdragon 845 series chip, which was just announced by Qualcomm. This is a definite improvement over the 835, although it remains on the same chip size, 10 nanometers at the moment. And uh, the main improvements are gonna be the CPU, GPU, a lot of camera improvements, and uh, some more we'll talk about. So first First off, GPU improvements, 35% in speed and 35% in efficiency. The CPU jumps up in 25% in speed and 15% in efficiency. It also supports a lot of new camera features such as 4K HDR, 4K 60 frames per second, and slow motion 480 frames per second at the quality of 720 pixels. Also there's a lot of improvements to low light, noise filtering, as well as digital image stabilization, so expect a lot of camera improvements just from the Snapdragon 840 chip alone. And surprisingly, there has been a leaked Geekbench for the Snapdragon 845 running in the Samsung Galaxy S9, and the results are pretty impressive. So we've got a single core score of 2,422 and a multi of 8,351. Now this is still falling behind the Apple A11 series, which gets an average of about 4,000 single core and 10,000 multi-core. That's crazy, but uh, Samsung is catching up. Again, they are limited by Qualcomm's performance on the Snapdragon 845, but still, this will be a healthy 
improvement. If the software can follow it and be optimized, you might not even notice a difference between these because the numbers are so great on both already. And on the other end, the Samsung Exynos processor series, there will be a new one, the 9810 series for the Galaxy S9 in other countries. This is probably going to be the superior one and Samsung has already announced a release date where they will be showing it to the world. It's supposed to be third generation CPU cores, it's going to be a 10 nanometer second generation platform, so a lot of improvements to efficiency and speed there as well likely will overcome and be faster than the 845. And I will of course put that to the test on this channel, but you guys will not be getting the Exynos version unless you live in a different country or specifically order the international version. Also in the Snapdragon 845, for the first time ever, we're going to be able to get speeds of up to 1.2 gigabit download speeds over LTE. Of course, if your carrier supports it. The iPhone 10 is about half of that right now. And something that Snapdragon copied from the iPhone, a secure enclave, they call it the secure processing unit, that actually handles all of the biometric data such as fingerprints, facial scan, iris scan. So it's going to be housed in this unit that cannot be hacked. It's separate from your actual phone. So that's that's good. You know, again, competition, copying things from both sides benefits both sides. This phone will likely ship with Android 8.0 as the Geekbench did mention. So that means you're going to get a slew of new features, but of course, still, you're going to get the TouchWiz interface, probably updated some new features in there. Might even take some inspiration from the iPhone X, uh, maybe some swipe commands, more of those, although the Galaxy S8 was the first with stuff like this, so I did like how uh, the user interface improved from the S7 on this guy. Now, things I would like to see, 3D touch on the display, maybe a ProMotion 120Hz display, Samsung's take on it. They could easily have an advantage over the iPhone 10 if they just incorporate that alone. That would be a great reason to go to it. But again, battery life would suffer, but then again, they got a more efficient CPU, a bigger battery, who knows? It might work. That's that's my one hope for this, is that it gets a 120Hz display. All right, and release date. So when can we expect this phone? It's actually gonna be coming very, very soon. Originally, it was rumored to happen at CES, Samsung quickly responded and shut that rumor down, so now it's slated for its usual release at Mobile World Congress. This time around, that release date has been leaked February 27th, apparently. So February, that's how soon we could be seeing the Galaxy S9, and it's gonna be very exciting. Even though it's not a huge evolution, it's basically the Samsung version of the S cycle from Apple, it'll still have a lot of great things in it for the Galaxy S7 user, it'll be a really great upgrade over the S8, so I will be covering all that stuff on this channel, of course, speed tests, camera tests, and all the durability aspects of it. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for that. It's just very exciting to, to have a competitor with such an incredible phone to compete with the iPhone X. And I can't wait to see where they're at when I actually put them head to head against each other. So thanks for watching, guys. That's the latest on the Galaxy S9. Stay tuned on any updates for that. Peace.